and as you can see, we don't have much spots left on here. They're faded. And this particular brown does not have a lot of spots, so I'm going to do something uh, I normally don't do if I'm familiar with the fish, but this one I'm not. Uh, this one's at a brown on Nevada, and it's a little different when I'm normally painting. And in order to keep the spots visible for our future reference, I'm going to take just a black Sharpie, and I'm going to go he through here so I can keep the original spot pattern to replicate it later. Uh, even though we're not going to paint the spots this color. This will just keep the spots here. So when we put our overlays on, I'll be able to go back through here. Because as you can see with the, the tail, we've got uh, the spots. They just angle right up on this particular fish. So I don't want to lose that characteristic of that fish. Normally, I like to get a photo in of the fish that I'm working on. The customer takes a nice close-up photo. That really helps a lot. But on this particular fish, I don't have that. So I match it up to my reference. And I'm just going to go through here and mark the majority of these spots. And another thing is I take a mental picture, too, as I go um, in my paint room. And I'm not being disturbed. Got the phone off the hook. And I just get into my photograph it kind of here in my mind as I'm going. And I'll remember that the spots will Kind of, and there's not really many spots on this one on the back. So I'm just going to continue here. and it doesn't take long. If you put your sealer on uh, before and then put your spots on, it's fine. If you put your spots on, then seal them, it's going to run. So there we go. That's going to replicate the original pattern on this particular fish. Now the head, I don't have any pictures of. And I didn't make any notes. If I have something unique of a unique pattern, it's really different to this brown. I'll post a little piece of tape on here. And I'll make notes on here, too. Like if it's a specific pattern that makes a spot pattern that makes the spots in the lower jaw, I'll make a template of it here just so I can refer back to it. Uh, but for this fish, we'll call this good. This particular fish, um, looking back here, all this modeling on the lower jaws that you see on here, it's not real prominent, but it's in there. There's dark markings all up and through here. Um, and I don't want to use a black. I don't want to use a pain gray on this one. I want it a little more subdued. So I'm going to find my brown right here. This is dark brown. And we're going to use this to do the modeling on this fish before we proceed anymore with the colors. And all my paints have marbles in them. You can probably hear that rattling around in there. Those uh, marbles help you mix the paint right away. And I prefer to use uh, these three ounce bottles like this. Um, I can't imagine painting with the old color cups where you have to switch out each time. It's just, you'll be there all day doing a fish. Uh, with, these, with these three ounce bottles, you can leave your paints mixed up. And you can just uh, keep them, when you go to put, uh, keep them from evaporating. I have these airbrush caps. And when you're done with them at the end of the day, you just put your airbrush cap back on them and set them aside. I've had paints. I've let these paints sit for two months and come back to them, and they're fine. They've gone down a little bit, a little shot of lacquer thinner in the neck of them, and they're ready to go again. But it's just so quick to change cups, the colors, uh, with the three ounce. And they tend to fit my hand much better. Um, I don't like the plastic ones. They, tend to, they don't fit my hand. With this um, bell shape to them here, you can grip them so much better than the plastic ones. And these are just more durable, the glass ones. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of imitate all this dark shading on the side of the brown trout here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test two different brushes, see which one I like. I'm going to test my stiff brush first, dip it in the brown, dab off some of it here. Make sure that is the brown. Yep. OK. And Push it on here and see how I like it. It's got a nice, like, peppery look to it when you jab it in there. OK, I've tr tried my heavier brush. And now I'm going to try the light one just for fun. See how that one's going to look. Yeah, you know, I like this one. See how we got a little more defined pepper markings than this heavier brush? So I'm going to use this medium brush here. Just texture this whole K 
cast head here. All this is going to get blended in to the colors of the brown and it really adds a nice effect into your paint when it's done. It makes it the difference between a cast head and a, a natural looking head. It doesn't take much, a little bit of paint goes a long way. And I'll bring it up on the maxillary bone here. Up around the nose. Okay, then we're going to do the back side. When I do this uh, marking technique, I use this fine one for my small mouth and for my large mouth. And the small mouth behind me, all the vertical banding and stuff, that's all done with this particular way here. I don't do any of it with an airbrush. And it just gives it a more natural, random look. I'm going to randomly put some on top of the head here too. Gonna show through the paint up here and give it a nice effect. Got the marking on the fish done. We're gonna go back through their white and we're gonna put some of this white back over this and we're gonna start taking the edge off of it, fading it in here. You're not trying to blank it all out because time we put other coats of pearl and colors over it, you want it to show through, but it's more subdued this way. Okay, after all that white we've done, we're going to go now and put a white pearl. And I always rinse my brush out, if you notice, after every color of a squirt bottle here with lacquer thinner. And I've got a little catch basin here which is full of kitty litter and it works really well to catch all your stinky paints and absorb it all in there and I've, I change that maybe once a year. It takes a lot to fill it up. Okay, this is white pearl, life tone color. <clears throat> and now basically I'm going to paint pearl the whole fish. Wherever I put white, we're going to put a coat of pearl on. Give it a nice, start a nice shiny texture here. Again, this pearl helps blend. Give the white a little shine to it. And at this point, you can see we've really covered our skin on this brown trout, which a lot of them you have to do. There's just not, very rarely do I get any browns that hold their color. They hold their spot pattern, but they don't hold their color very well. Now we've got a pretty uniform base here to start with. For laying our colors down here, I'll show you. Remember what we started with, and now we've got the head matched into the skin. We're still a little light right in here, but we're going to take care of that with some blending here in a minute. But we're going to take this off the tail, protecting it so we don't get... And see, we kind of got a nice outline then here. It really defines the the tail a lot better than if you didn't have that on there. We'd be having overspray on here and and that's a nice solid tail except for a little fix here we'll work on. So okay, we'll set it up here and we'll go back to our reference. We'll start looking at it here and we've got a brown trout. We've got uh, it's got kind of a brownish green 